we want to look at what happens to the nutrients after they're eaten. So we want to name the nutrients that we eat. The first nutrients that we eat are carbohydrates. Let me switch to a pen. I'm sorry, I left it on. On eraser. Okay, carbohydrates. Lipids. And proteins. You can put nucleic acids on there if you want to, but we're really going to just talk about carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. What can we say about carbohydrates and proteins? They have something in common because they're water soluble and lipids are lipid soluble. Okay, so whenever these foods are eaten, they're going to go from the mouth to the pharynx, to the esophagus, to the stomach, and into the small intestines. Most of digestion and absorption will take place in the small intestines. So let's look at the small intestines. The small intestines is where most digestion and absorption take place. Okay, so what are carbohydrates digested into? Carbs are digested into monosaccharides. Okay, an example of a monosaccharide would be fructose and glucose would be a second example. An example of a disaccharide, a disaccharide is going to be two, two monosaccharides joined together. So common disaccharide is sucrose, which is table sugar. It's made up of fructose and glucose. The proteins, proteins are digested into peptides. Peptides are digested into amino acids. Amino acids are small enough to be absorbed across the intestinal lining. Lipids, uh, we really mainly look at triglycerides. Triglycerides, triglycerides are going to be digested into glycerol and fatty acids. Okay. You'll find some websites that say glycerol and two fatty acids. Um, will be still be joined together. Um, that is true, but for us, for our point right now, we just want to know glycerol and three fatty acids. Okay, what is going to be absorbed across the intestinal lining? Monosaccharides are absorbed across the intestinal lining. Amino acids are also absorbed across the intestinal lining. So I'm going to draw lines here and we'll make them go over here. These are water soluble. So monosaccharides and amino acids are going to enter, they're going to be absorbed into the bloodstream. absorbed into the bloodstream of the digestive organs. They're going to find their way into, they're probably going to be in the superior mesenteric, um, and they're going to find their way into the hepatic portal vein. Okay, the hepatic portal vein takes them to the liver, and the liver is going to do a couple of things. Number one, with your monosaccharides, it's going to convert all the monosaccharides to glucose. The reason that all monosaccharides are converted to glucose is because cells can only use glucose. Fructose, sucrose, any of those sugars are not important to the cell because it doesn't have the enzymes to be able to um, break it down or use it for energy. So all of your monosaccharides are converted to glucose. A second thing the liver is going to do is it's going to store some of this glucose as glycogen. Okay, some of the glucose will go into the bloodstream and the glucose level in the bloodstream will go up, but some of the glucose will also replenish the glycogen storages in the liver for in between meals. And number three, if you have excess glucose beyond that, it's going to be stored as fat. Okay, that's what happens to the monosaccharides. What happens to the amino acids? Okay, the amino acids are going to be converted to non-essential amino acids. Non-essential amino acids. Okay, um, an essential amino acid, remember, is going to, or an essential nutrient, is going to be needed by the person to take in. Um, so they have to eat that essential nutrient to have it in their diet. 
actually to have it in their body they're supposed to have it in their diet okay um, and then your body is your liver is going to be able to use some of those amino acids and it's going to make plasma proteins So some of those amino acids will be used to make plasma proteins. Majority of those amino acids are going to enter the bloodstream. And whenever those amino acids enter the bloodstream, they're going to be able to be taken in by cells. And the cells are going to use those amino acids for enzymes, antibodies, antigens, um, cell components. So if you remember myosin, actin, troponin, tropomyosin, all of that's part of your muscle proteins. You have collagen, keratin. You have your red bone marrow is going to make red blood cells and it needs hemoglobin. So there's several uses of these amino acids that your body is going to use these amino acids to make proteins with. Okay, so that's what happens to your water-soluble nutrients. I need some more room here, so I'm going to erase some of this. I can get to the eraser. So the water-soluble nutrients go to the liver via the hepatic portal system. What happens to the lipid-soluble nutrients? Well, that's glycerol and three fatty acids. Glycerol and three fatty acids are going to, um, they're absorbed. They are going to enter the lacteals. Whenever they enter lacteals, they're going to go to the thoracic duct. Okay, this is part of the lymphatic system. The, limb, the thoracic duct is going to empty into the left subclavian vein. And the left subclavian vein, if you remember that, that is a blood vessel. So fat does not need to be processed. It doesn't need to be converted by the liver. So it goes directly into the bloodstream. And what's going to happen to the fat? The fat is going to be, number one, used by cells as energy or um, used it to build something with, building components. Number two, um, if you have excess fat beyond that, it's stored as fat. So that is the fate of the nutrients.